Werner in Copenhagen, Denmark, one of my all-time favorite cities. Love that place. And you guys in Denmark and Copenhagen in particular, you know food. Woo! I've had some of the best food I've ever eaten. It's a, well, and the funny thing is, I was going to say it's a vegetarian's paradise, but that's not true because they eat a lot of meat there. Them, them Scandinavians, they eat a lot of that meat. But boy, everywhere I went, great vegetarian options. It was wonderful. Anyway, Werner writes to me and says, Paul, I am a great fan of your videos. Why, thank you, sir. Now you have gotten to a mature age. <laughs> Don't you love how people put this mask on age? Look, let's be honest. I am 73 years old, coming on 74. I'm an old guy. I am just an old guy and ain't no getting around it. And my mother-in-law used to say, well, old is like 10 years older than you are. Well, that's true. And I feel like I'm 32, 33 years old. But when I look in the mirror, I'm an old guy. I ain't no about that. Now, I will say this in my defense. Here, here he is. Paul's off and rambling. I work 12 hours a day, seven days a week. And sometimes I'm working on my book. Some days I'm, I'm, we're converting a we bought a really cool van and we're going to convert it into a camping van. So I'm designing all of that. Um, I'm, I'm writing a novel. I've got a, 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 you know, a trilogy that I'm writing. I you know, run this company. I make videos. I, do, I write daily blogs. I, I'm helping with the Carbon Almanac. I'm an editor on the, this great piece coming out called the Carbon Almanac. So, uh, and, and so, you know, I still outrun most people who, guys over here, I'm like, here I am on Saturday, right? I'm down here making videos, talking to you, and I'm full of energy and happy about it and loving it, but I'm old. Okay, so don't let age get in the way of you doing stuff, because I certainly haven't. Um, and he says, I am now the same age as you. And it's known that the hearing gets worse with age. Does this affect the sound of your products? Kind regards, Werner Ori from Copenhagen, Denmark. Well, Werner, yes and no. Mostly no. So hearing is a very subjective subject. I have very good hearing, but I imagine it rolls off, I don't know, 7, 8K. I have noticed that some of the engineers hear things that I don't on occasion. They'll hear a, a hiss or a whistle, and I'm like, oh, which means my high frequency hearing is going down, which is natural with age. Now, I have been very protective of my hearing over the years, so I still hear better than most people that I know, even that are half my age, because they haven't paid a whole lot of attention and have gone to loud concerts and haven't protected themselves. So if you're in that boat, protect your hearing, please. Once it, <laughs> it's trying to bite me. Once your hearing goes, there's no bringing it back. So really protect your hearing. And I've done it and it's benefited me all these years. Secondly, thirdly, whatever it is, your ability to hear has a lot to do with your attention span. Now, I am a very good listener, a very attentive listener. I hear things and I pay attention to sounds around me. And that maybe that's just my personality. I don't know. But I do. And so I have trained myself over the years to, to listen a lot. And why does that matter? Well, if you listen a lot attentively, attentively, you know that a goose flying overhead, this is kind of winter, so we hear this, wah, wah, all these geese flying overhead. I listen to that and I pay attention to how that sounds. Now, if all of a sudden I'm somewhere and I hear this distant sound, others going, what the hell is that? I know what that is. I can identify it and I can probably tell how high they are or how low they are. That's important because I have a reference. Now, 
Is it important to know what my reference for geese is? No. But because I go to a lot of live concerts, because I listen to live music being played at Octave Records, the studios, I know what live music sounds like and I pay attention to it. So regardless of how my high frequency is going, I still hear and pay attention very well. And when you do that, I know what a violin sounds like. I know what a trumpet sounds like. So when I hear it on our equipment, I can tell you if it's close to real or not. And that's what matters. And that's where the golden ears comes in, right? So my hearing is as acute and accurate as it has ever been when it comes to finding out how something sounds I mean, I still to this day will just go, mm, that doesn't sound right. We've lost this or that. And they'll look at me and go, wow, you picked up on that quick. Sure. Is it because I have the greatest ears in the world? No. It's because the ear brain connection has been developed over all this time. And that's what's critical. The ear to brain, how we comprehend all this sound and what we do with it in our minds. So the last thing I'll say on this, I know some of the very best listeners I know and when I say listeners, I mean evaluators of stereo equipment, probably have frequency responses that start to go about 3 dB down at 2 or 3K. And they are excellent listeners because that ear-brain connection has been developed over the years and it compensates. Okay? Thanks. And enjoy yourself out there in Denmark. Talk to you later.